Recently, I added enemy health bars to the game that I'm building in Phaser and Next.js. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it and how you can avoid the one major bug that I ran into. Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to the series where I try to start my own tech company and share the lessons that I'm learning along the way. I'm trying to build a game slash productivity app that helps users train their ability to focus for longer periods of time. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing so that you'll know when I release the beta version of this application. To add a health bar to your game, basically you want to build a rectangle that floats above your character. And the tricky part is having that rectangle move with your character. I think there's two main ways of accomplishing this. One you could have the health bar receive information from your enemy. So when your enemy moves, the health bar follows your enemy. Or two, you can treat these things as one unit. And instead of telling your enemy where to move, you tell this unit where to move. And just like here, when we grab these two things at once, it's a lot easier to grab them and move them together than it is to move them one at a time. So I went with the second approach and I created one game object that's going to house both the enemy and the health bar and move them at the same time. While Phaser is the game engine that I'm building in, I'm using this plugin called Grid Engine to support coordinate-based movement. And fortunately, they have a section of their documentation where they go over Phaser containers and how to use them. This seems like it's exactly what we're looking for. And in their example, they have this text floating above their player that is his name. And as you move the player, the text also moves. At first glance, this seems pretty straightforward to implement. We can create a variable using a utility function on the scene object itself. We do this saying this.add.container and then passing in an X and a Y coordinate value and a dependency array, which takes the children that you would like to nest inside of this container object. And then we pass that container object into the character object on our array of characters inside of our grid engine config. All right, so here we are in my code base. I tried to follow exactly what the documentation did. I'm creating a container on line 471 using utility function on the scene object. I'm passing in zeros for the X and Y values. And then I'm passing in the enemy sprite and a health bar, which is basically a red rectangle as dependence in this utility function. Then I pass that container into the grid engine config. And let's see if it worked. So here we are in the development mode of my application and you can see that for some reason the health bars have come in fine, but we're totally missing all of the enemy sprites that should be right underneath all of these health bars. It took me a while to figure out why this was happening. And I wonder if you can figure it out based off of the code that we've seen so far. But there is one uh, enemy here at the bottom. And interestingly, when it gets into range of my character and he should go attack my character, he goes the completely wrong direction. And then we see a health bar come on screen and the health bar seems like it's at the right place and going to the right coordinates, but the enemy sprites themselves seem completely wrong. This was a really confusing problem for me at first, and it wasn't until I dove into the phaser documentation on how containers worked that I found a solution. Here we are in the phaser documentation, and this second paragraph here really caught my attention right away. The origin of a container is 0x0 in local space, and that cannot be changed the children you add to the container should be positioned with this value in mind, i.e. you should treat 0, 0 as being the center of the container and position children positively and negatively around it as required. Once I read this, I at least had a hint of how to solve my problem. So I started to look for all instances related to character positioning in my code base. Sure enough, I realized that when I was instantiating these enemy sprites, I was taking the X position and Y position from the tiled map data. Now, we were also using that position data when we were adding the enemy sprite object to our grid engine config here on lines 484 and 485. But by initially setting it, when the character was created on lines 393 and 394, that is what is creating that offset between the health bar and the enemy sprite itself. All right, I've set those coordinates to zero and refreshed the page here. You can see that the enemy sprite is spawning in the correct location and the health bar is following it as it moves. So these are being treated as one container object and everything is working as intended. I think the main takeaway for me here is that as a developer, sometimes the best thing that you can do is just go read the documentation. 
and hope that that provides you some hint or better understanding as to how things are working and that that will get you one step closer to being able to solve your bug. Hopefully you found this video insightful or helpful in some way. And if you did, please consider liking or subscribing down below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.